I don't need a seat. I'm a stand-up director. <laughs> stand-up guy. What's up, guys? Here we are with our first episode of Race Car Explain. We're going to be going through the braking system on this 2018 Volkswagen Golf GTI TCR. So the first thing you're going to notice is this rotor. It's pretty big. It's a lot bigger than the standard street car rotor, and it's also mounted on an aluminum plate. This is called a floating rotor. So what you're going to notice is these little pins are very different and it allows the rotor to actually expand and contract as it heats up. The other thing you're going to notice is it has slots on the friction surface. So these slots actually don't extend all the way past the edge, they actually stop before the edge. And that is because this rotor gets so warm under braking that if the slots did extend past the edge, it could possibly start a crack and crack all the way through the rotor. The last thing you're going to notice about this rotor is it's directionally veined. So there's veins inside the rotor here that are directional. So basically, as the rotor spins around, it acts like a big turbine, and it pulls the air from inside and spits it out. So this constantly pulling air and spitting it out is passing air by the hot metal surface, and it's cooling it as you drive. The other thing that makes that even more efficient is the fact that that is hooked to a brake duct. So we're pulling fresh air off the front of the car into the hub that is constantly being expelled through the rotor. So this is constantly cooling the rotor down whenever the car is in motion. Now moving on to the brake pad and the brake caliper, first thing you're going to notice is the pad is pretty large. So the pad is about that big and it's very thick. The reason it's very thick is because we use a lot of pad during a race application. For instance, this rotor and these pads will be changed every second race on these cars. The other thing you're going to notice is this pad compound. So the pad compound is designed to work at very high temperatures. So on a typical street car, your brakes need to work as soon as you get in the car. So the brake compound is formulated to work between basically zero degrees and up to maybe about 500 degrees. Anything past 500 degrees, the brakes start to fade and you really start to lose braking performance. On a race car, it's different. The entire compound has been formulated to work at higher temperatures. So what happens is you don't have brakes at the colder temperatures. So if you notice when cars pull out on track and they start swerving around under the, under the warm up laps and they start using their brakes really heavily, that is done to warm up this entire assembly so the brakes work. On a typical race car, the brakes, really, their operating range is anywhere between 500 and 1,000 degrees. So anything below 500 degrees, you really have limited braking, if any at all. Now moving forward to the caliper, one thing you're going to notice is this is a six-piston AP racing caliper. One of the interesting things about this racing caliper is that the pistons are not actually the same size. So the piston on the leading edge of the pad is a smaller diameter than the piston on the trailing edge of the pad. The reason for this is that the caliper is able to apply a greater force to the trailing edge and a less force to the leading edge. What this does is it creates more even pad wear. If we had the same size pistons, all three on one side and three on this side, the pad would actually wear in a wedge shape, which wouldn't promote long life and wouldn't be as efficient. The last thing you're going to notice about this caliper is all of this bracing on the back side. So you can see it's pretty thick up here, pretty thick up here, and then these big bolts that go across this whole back section. What they do is when this caliper squeezes down really hard on this rotor, what it wants to do is it wants to flex outward. By having bracing across this, it keeps the caliper really solid and keeps it from flexing. That means a better brake feel for the driver and overall better brake performance for the car. So here we are in the engine compartment. We're going to be talking about the brake reservoir. So the brake reservoir is where the brake fluid is held. This is plumbed into the driver's cabin because on race cars, we have bespoke pedal setups that actually have the master cylinders inside. On a typical street car though, you would find right here a big brake booster and typically your master cylinder right here. Because this is a race car, you have a slightly different configuration. So what I will note is this one has three separate reservoirs, one for the clutch, one for the front brake circuit, and one for the rear brake circuit. This makes all three circuits completely independent of one another. That means if there's a leak in the front brake circuit, the rear brake circuit will still function, or if there's a leak in the clutch circuit, the brakes will still function. Now looking at this, Brake fluid is super, super critical to the braking system in this car. We talked at the wheel about how much heat is generated by these brakes and the fact that they operate between 500 and 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we look at brake fluid, you'll see that there's actually two boiling points. The first one is your dry boiling point, which on this brake fluid is a little over 600 degrees. And the second one is your wet boiling point, which on this brake fluid is a little, little bit under 400 degrees. So that's over a 200 degree difference between the wet and the dry boiling point. Now you're probably wondering what is wet and what is dry boiling. Dry boiling point is this brake fluid without any moisture in it whatsoever. The wet boiling point is this brake fluid with about 3.7% moisture. 
The reason why that number is chosen is because brake fluid is hydroscopic. Hydroscopic means it absorbs moisture. So as soon as you take the cap off this brake fluid, moisture in the air, humidity, will actually start going into the brake fluid, lowering its boiling point. So for race cars, when we bleed the brakes on these cars, which we do all the time to make sure we have fresh brake fluid, we actually only use fresh brake fluid containers. We never recap a brake fluid. We use the entire thing, put it in the car, and start with a fresh one every time. That is how critical the brake fluid boiling point is to the performance of these brakes on this car. So now that we've talked about brake fluid, let's go inside the car and look at all the cool tech between brake biasing, the pedals, and the ABS system. So now we're inside the car where the master cylinders actually live. So we come here, we see the clutch pedal with the master cylinder and the line coming from the engine compartment. Right here we have the brake pedal and two lines, like I said, one for the front circuit right here, one for the rear circuit right there. So the reason why we have a separate master cylinder for the front circuit and the rear circuit is so we can have bias. So if you've ever applied the brakes on a bicycle, you know you have a front brake and a rear brake. If you apply the front brake too heavy, you might go over the handlebars. If you apply the rear brake too heavy, you're probably gonna skid. So the reason why we have a brake bias control is so we can control the brakes on the car to optimize the stopping performance of the car. The way we do that is by having what we call a balance bar. So you can see this pedal right here acts upon this bar, but these two master cylinders are actually independent of one another, and this bar can put different amounts of pressure on one master cylinder versus the other. This is also controlled by a knob in the center console that the driver can control. So as the driver controls this knob, it spins this threaded portion. This threaded portion biases more brake force to the front or the rear, depending on what the driver wants. This is really a key element in race cars because it allows the driver to adjust the car to conditions. So maybe you started the race in the dry when you have a lot of braking force and you really want a lot of the brakes going to the front wheels. If it starts raining, you're gonna have a lot less grip on the road, which means you're not gonna be able to put as much braking force to the front wheels. To cope with that, the driver will move the brake bias rearward to make the car stop as quickly as it can. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the handbrake. So we have a big handbrake right here, and this is tied directly into the rear brake circuit. So you'll actually see the rear brake circuit comes into this master cylinder and goes right out of it. The reason we use a handbrake like this is for standing starts and to get temperature into our rear tires. So for a standing start, we allow, we can pull this, hold the car from rolling, and we can ride the clutch pedal to get it right at the point of grip. And then as soon as we get the green light, we're off with the clutch and we let go of the handbrake. The other bias adjustment you're gonna see, along with the knob that I showed you with the balance bar before, is this proportioning valve. The proportioning valve is a really quick way to adjust the maximum brake pressure to the rear brakes. So, one of the issues we have with these front wheel drive race cars is it takes a lot of time to get temperature into the rear tires because they don't do a lot. So, we will actually start the race with a more forward bias, something like that. As the rear tires gain temperature, therefore more grip, we can actually knock this down one, two, or three spots to get more braking performance. What this actually does is it cuts off the peak pressure to the rear. So if this is too far back and the tires are too cold, what will happen is when you initially stab or push the brake pedal really hard, the rear wheels will lock up, which creates a very unstable car. All right, so now we're gonna head over to the other side. We're gonna look at the plumbing and the ABS on this race car. So here we are inside the car and I'm gonna be showing you the plumbing in the ABS module. So you can see all the plumbing is done with these soft stainless steel lines. The reason that is is because race cars don't have to be road legal. There's a DOT rule stating that you can't have a soft brake line that's longer than 18 inches in your car. So that's why you always have a soft brake line attached to a hard steel brake line. But in a race car, we don't have those same rules. So we actually find it most efficient to run these Teflon lined stainless steel lines throughout the entire car. The reason for that is it makes servicing the car that much easier. If I needed to unbolt this brake bias right here, or maybe the ABS pump down on the floor, I can simply unbolt them and move them wherever I need to, and I don't have to worry about unplumbing and taking the brake connections apart. The other thing I wanna show you is the brake ABS module on the floor. So typically, ABS modules are found in the engine compartment, but because weight and the center of gravity is so critical to a race car, it is actually mounted on the passenger side floor. In this case, our ABS module is actually turned off because we're not allowed to use ABS in our racing series. But in other series around the world, some of the cars are allowed ABS, and so we have it so we can turn it on if we need it. The last thing I want to show you is actually how we can set the brake bias from the driver's compartment without actually driving the car. So on our dash, we actually have a braking setup dashboard. So this shows our front brake pressure right here, 
It shows our rear brake pressure here, and it also shows our balance. So if you see, if I pull the handbrake, you can see the rear brake pressure will spike, but nothing happens to the front brake pressure. By using this, we can set the brake pressure, and we can see that right now we have about a 59 to 60% bias on the brakes. We use that to set up the car to get it as close as we can for the driver, and then when the driver goes out, just finite adjustments to where he needs to get it. I hope you've enjoyed going around the brake systems on this 2018 Golf GTI TCR. This was our first episode of Race Cars Explained, and if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button, and if you want to see more of this, please subscribe. See you next time.